Amen. Amen. I yes. tell you, you are so precious Amen. to God on this realm. How I pray the Lord give you a revelation of reality. How I pray He let you see Him and yourself on the time you are in the church, and this glorious church. Let's give Him time. Let's stand for prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. We ask you to have your way with us. We thank you for bringing us together again. Where two or three are gathered, you are in our midst, constantly inhabiting the praise. Every discovery, every revelation, and every discipline of the Holy Spirit to show them the trueness of reality, they can't help but burst out in glorious array of praise. And you are right there going, yes, that I am, that I deserve, that's what I do. Amen? And like the 24 elders and the four living creatures, we have no choice but to say, Amen, Amen, so be it. Glory, honor, and power, and praise. Amen. Father, today prepare our hearts and our minds. Do a thorough work today. Let your spirit come forth. Let life come forth. Let light come forth. We lock the enemy out of the procession today. He has no inroad, no activities, no influence, no snare, no attack. Let us in this moment, in every moment of our being and existence to come. And in the body of Christ, throw the rams and the rams. We lock him up. Jesus, we know who will say, create, save, and hold this realm. He is forever established, forever, Father, to be praised. He is lifted on high, to be adored throughout all generation, in time and out of time, in season and out of season. Father, today I ask you to seal away my soul so your word can come forth on in this. I ask you to seal away, let the cross do a thorough work on your church today so the soul do not interfere with the regenerated spirit and the release of the Holy Spirit. Today I ask you to let your wisdom come forth because Jesus is our wisdom. Let your righteousness be seen. Let your sanctification, that consecration, be seen, perceived, and standing. Let redemption be actualized. Let glory and praise, Father, and joy and peace. Today, let victory flow. Today, I thank you for minds that can comprehend, heart that can meet conviction, tongues that are ready to praise, and ears that are hoping to hear and comprehend. Father, I commit this procession into your hands in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we say amen. 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 Welcome, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Happy Family Day. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name. You know, the Lord been speaking, and I've been in communion all week, and you've been doing the same with Pastor Chow, and with the Lord conform that we want the Word to continue today. Mm. You know, we've been following a series, amen? Mm -hmm. Salvation of the soul and living faith. And we are about to move into living faith. Ask somebody why should we have living faith? Wow. Why should, should we, we have, have living, living faith? faith? God is the one who requires you have living faith. We're going to look at this today. Just a little summary of what we have been doing so far. We know we have to win the soul. Every component and attribute of the soul. Amen. Why we want to win it? We want to make sure we enter the kingdom. Because the Bible says if the eyes or some part of the soul is hindering you, Jesus said cut it out so it doesn't stop you from getting in the kingdom. Hallelujah. So if you don't win the soul, I am promising you, you're going to have components of the soul. Not the salvation I'm talking about that stops you, you understand, from being ready when the Lord comes. Mm. Because you didn't lose it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, how are you going to do it? You're going to need to use this true life and the word that is life, the implanted word to free the soul from whatsoever is entangling it. Especially that sin that is so readily and cleverly always in tangles. Mm -hmm. And where we have left off, the Bible teaches us in 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2, you need to have the mind of Christ, amen, that prepared to suffer. And this is the topic really where we want to focus on today because I believe this particular area is greatly misunderstood, sneer and confused in the church. Mm -hmm. 
I believe most of us do not suffer according to the mind of Christ or what God has called you to because the suffering God wants you to have transform you. Mm -hmm. The suffering the enemy wants you to have paralyzed, crippled, debilitate you, diminish you. Yes. That suffering is wrong. And we need to be able to discern the difference. Mm -hmm. Not all suffering is the mind of Christ suffering. Mm -hmm. So we need to know exactly what it is. We need to know exactly what it is. So if we suffer, so if we suffer, it's for transformation. It's for transformation. In fact, the Bible calls it, the Bible said, you understand? God said, I will lead you into pressure to enlarge you. Mm. Without pressure, he can't enlarge you. Without the pressure stone in the dark heart, with all the pressure on the water, mm. it doesn't become what? Precious stone. Right. Without gold being refined by fire, it doesn't become what? Pure. Mm. Without you are refined by pressure, your endurance will not be perfected. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, God said, I don't want you to have any defects. Mm -hmm. We need to understand what he's doing. And we need to not let the enemy interpret what God is doing in us and for us. Mm -hmm. But if you don't understand it, we're going to mess it up. The mind of Christ is a specific mindset of Christ for transformation. But you do pass through hardship to get it. Mm -hmm. And you must not let the enemy interpret that hardship. You must follow what God say it is and what He's doing to be effective. Hallelujah. Before I jump into the Word, there are three things we have to settle. If we don't settle this, the mind of Christ won't, won't help you. In fact, part of the mind of Christ, what I like to call, let's call it the, um, the stationary side of God's mind, is this side. And the other side we're going to look at today is the active side, the transformation. Mm -hmm. The positional side, it's also the mind of Christ. But it's not really the suffering, it's the believing and the faith side. There are three things I need you to write down and I need you to have them locked down. If you don't have this, you will not in embrace the mind of Christ to suffer. The first one you have to get under control, you must settle this matter. You have to believe, if you believe in Christ, amen, you accept Christ as your Lord, the reason you accept Him is so you are forgiven. You must believe I have been forgiven mm. from all my sins. I don't care what I have done. Mm. Whether I have cursed my mom, I beat my sister, beat my brother. When you accept Christ, you have been absolutely and totally forgiven. Amen. The first one you have to settle. Because it's going to be imperative. If you haven't settled it, you will not even move forward. Mm -hmm. Now, once you accept Christ and you accept His forgiveness, that He atoned for all the wrong you have done before, you're going to do now and in the future, then this should put you in a state where the Bible says you are justified. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask, some, ask somebody, what does justification mean? What, what is justification? And we're going to look at it in the scripture. That you have the right to be in relationship to God. You have the right to have peace. You have the right to be able to pray. You have the right to have help. You have the right to spread. You have the right to have life and have life to what? The fullest. If you do not feel justified, you are going to sabotage it. If you don't feel forgiven, you will not feel justified. And if you don't feel justified, I promise you, you're going to do something to validate that I don't deserve it. And I don't work for justification. You know what I'm I deserve it. Mm. I deserve it, not on my merit, because Jesus died for me. Mm. You are justified, not because of what you do. You are justified because of what, who Jesus is mm -hmm. and what he has done for you. Amen. If you refuse your justification... Then you are throwing away everything he went through for you. If the enemy can convince you, you don't deserve this thing. And what's happening to you, you deserve to suffer. Then you have reject being justified. You have reject forgiveness. And finally, once you get forgiveness and justification, the last thing you need to embrace, this one needs the mind of Christ, is sanctification. God must remove everything that sets itself or oppose forgiveness and justification. So every person or thing or force that try to tell you you're not forgiven or you're not justified, God has to what? Remove them. This process is called consecration. He must remove everyone or everything that opposes what he has done, his work, out of your life. Are you listening? If you have a friend or a spirit speaking to you and telling you you're not forgiven, or you're not justified, God has to what? Sanctify you. Mm -hmm. These three have to settle. You have to know I'm forgiven. 
I am justified or qualified, and I am what? Sanctified for anything that tried to mess with the first one, mm -hmm. two. Does this make sense, sir? Mm -hmm. I am telling you, if you do not understand and know how to stand in these three positions, you will not be able to embrace the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Where God wants to take you, which he said is to enlarge you, you're going to make it extremely difficult to the point unless he take over and just do it, you will not accomplish it. Mm -hmm. And you will hinder and suffer at the work of God. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, we, are, we have been forgiven, we have been been forgiven justified, justified, and constantly being, and constantly being sanctified. sanctified. Separate from all that interfere with what God has done. Now it's right here, God said, I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. I'm not going to leave you that one just has been forgiven, justified, and sanctified. I'm going to give you the helper, Paraclesis, the one who is alongside you. Amen. Now among the many things the Holy Spirit do, there are two predominant things He do personally for you and me. The first one is, is uh, John 16. It's to lead you into all truth. You understand? All reality, all trueness. Truth means reality, trueness. So the Holy Spirit must give you revelation, discovery of the spirit realm, discovery of God who is a spirit, discovery, amen, of your regenerated spirit, discovery of the Holy Spirit, Dispar discovery of all spiritual things, because every spiritual blessing is given to you, Ephesians 1, 3, and it's in heaven. So he must give you revelation of the kingdom of God and spiritual things. So one of the number one personal job of the Holy Spirit is to give you what? Revelation. It's why Paul prayed for them in Ephesians 1, 18. I pray that you will have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen. This is the first part of his job. Amen. Yes. If you do not, either he's the executor of all spiritual things. In fact, they're all in him. If he don't reveal to you the things of God, you will not become spiritual and you will not be able to move effectively with God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. The second thing he must do, you understand, is discipline you. He must discipline you to become familiar with spiritual things and to abide habitually in the what? The spirit. Mm -hmm. So the only Ghost on one hand is giving you spiritual revelation and secondly, he's giving you what? Discipline to become familiar, maintain, to be enlightened, allowed to operate effectively in it. This is why Christ said, you understand? Those I love, I what? I discipline. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't understand this, when the Holy Spirit discipline you, the enemy is going to lie and go, it is because you cursed your mother once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, the fool, not realizing you are forgiven, that the Holy Spirit is just trying to transform you, will undo your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And move away from the work of God. Today, one of the things we have to be able to, I'm trusting God, Father, today, administer in a way that we will be clear. Mm. You have to be able to tell the difference between the hands of God and the devil in your life. Amen. Yeah. If you can't tell the difference, Amen. you're going to constantly interfere with the work of the Holy yes. Spirit. When you try to reveal your spiritual things, you'll mess it up. And when you try to discipline you, no. you'll mess it up. <laughs> so you have to be able to tell which is the hands of God. How does God work? Mm -hmm. And how does the devil work? Right. Hallelujah. Amen. So keep in mind, the three foundations are there. Forgiveness, sanctification, and justification. And the Holy Spirit... You understand? Revealing all truth, all spiritual reality to you and disciplining you to become familiar and stay in. You have to be acquainted, the Bible says, and the Bible says you have to what? Abide. Yeah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And as I said, the mind of Christ will be crucial in this process for you comprehending this process. Hallelujah. Now, one of the things I want us to look at this morning as we, as, we, as we flow into the Word of God, because this is crucial, and to discern, you understand, what God wants, and, and, what, uh, and, 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 and to discern between when the Holy Spirit is working and when the devil is working. I want to start this morning by looking at a scripture. I want to look at James chapter 2 verse 5. Then we're going to see how God will accomplish this. James, after Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 5. I want you to see what God, what God wants. And then you need to know how he's going to get it. What does he do to accomplish his goal? 
And if you have not settled the basic tree, you're going to interfere with this. Please say amen. 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 Are we there? Amplified Bible, page 1445. James chapter 2, verse 5. Salvation of the soul and living faith. You need to have living faith. If you can't even get past the three foundation, there's no way you're going to have engaging active faith. But God demands that you'll see you become rich in faith. God demands that your faith be operated at its highest level. But you notice he needs a specific person that is forced or what I call the condition is right to do it. Yeah. Are we there? Mm -hmm. The Bible read, listen my beloved brethren. This is James talking to the church, his brethren. Mm -hmm. You and me. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world mm -hmm. to be rich in faith? So God chose those that are poor in resource, materially, to be rich in faith. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to take a look at this very soon. Amen. Yeah. And in their position as believers, say, pos say their position as believers. Position say believers. our position as believers. Our our position is believers. The Bible said, and to inherit the kingdom which he has promised to those who love him. Why does God need you poor to make you rich in faith? Why? So you rely on yourself. Yes, if you have all the resources and everything, you will not use faith. He needs you in a position. He said the believer's position is to be in a position that he or she constantly is forced to use what? Faith. Faith. He wants you, but at the same time, he wants you rich. But he wants you rich through what? Faith. Faith. Amen. He don't want you to get rich by the world. Mm. He said, I want you to be sure because the reason, man forsake God for the world. They go, your created resource is better. God said, because you don't know me, you wouldn't talk nonsense. The thing I create can be more than me. Mm. The church is supposed to show, you think the world has something, if you only know the one that created the world. Mm. But he needs to, so a lot of times you'll find what God will do, as you'll see, he will lead you into situations right. to force you to use faith. Yes. This is why Christ said, it is so hard for the rich to get in the kingdom. Is it? They can't get it. That's not true. It's just they have so much things, it's hard for them to use what? Mm -hmm. Faith. Yeah. Uh, in, my, in my work, I learned that the grace is given. Faith is taking from God. Faith is getting from God. You have to have faith. Cor yes, yes, correct. You're not to you know that things are already been mm -hmm. given. Mm -hmm. So grace, you understand? Grace is given yes. already. Yeah. But faith is to Hey, yeah, hey. just to observe. This is what God said. I can't, I can't do nothing with you if you have no faith. So you go, I'm going to lead you into a situation where you are deficient, where you are poor in that area. So you release your faith so I can make you rich. So he can respond. Yeah. 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 Live in faith. But if you don't understand this, when God brings you into the situation, Satan will come to you and go, you know why you don't have you, you were mean to your husband last week. Mm -hmm. You know why you don't have? It's because last week you promised Javi you're going to give her something and you didn't. And he will reinterpret the situation. You must understand and say, get lost. I am forgiven. I am justified. And I am sanctified. So the reason I'm in this situation is to release my faith that I can become rich. Yes. <laughs> this is why the Bible says, the truth sets you free. free. You know, many Christian. Soon as, I'm going to show you in a minute. Soon as God will lead them into some form of impoverished. They go, I must have sinned. I must have did something wrong. This is why I'm struggling. This is why I'm suffering. And immediately undo the works of the Holy Spirit. We're going to see today who lead you in those situations. Listen to me. You are a Christian. Satan can't touch you unless you are rebelling against God or unless God allows it. And God typically will tell you. And even then he'll keep you as you'll see. I'll show you today. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And instead of God let him touch you, it's to perfect something in you. Yes. You have to understand. Don't let him interpret when God leads you into the condition. The Bible said the position of a believer is to be in a state that he can release faith to be rich. If you are living a life, I know we Christians, we would like to have nice cushiony life. If you're living a life that is not releasing faith, your Christian walk is failing you. God can't use you. You are useless today. He needs you to be in a position. No, listen to me. 
I am fortunate this way. By resource to a certain degree, material, personally, I have just about everything. But yet my faith is challenged every day. God leads my heart into the church to see the state of the church. Something none of my resource can what? Yep. Fix. Yep. This makes me consistently feeling poor in this area. And consistently have to release my what? Faith. So I can become what? Rich to meet the... Amen. Amen. The the Amen. I'm going to show you something today. God said every time you come in contact with the body, you're supposed to supply it. Mm. So if you come in contact with the body and the body lack peace, peace should flow up from you. Mm -hmm. If you come in contact with the body of Christ and it lack joy, joy should flow from you. If you come in contact with the body and the body is lacking health, mm -hmm. you understand, or reason, anything mm -hmm. you are supposed to. He said if this is not happening, there's a deficiency in you. Mm -hmm. And you go, we gotta fix it. Mm -hmm. You ever know some people, no matter what problem you have, when you come in contact with them, they can fix it? Mm -hmm. It is because they have been dealt with. We're gonna look and see mm -hmm. how God deals with us. Amen. Please understand James. Amen. He said, my beloved brother, have not God chose you to be poor in the eyes of the world? The world goes, look at you, you're so poor. He said, why? So you can be rich in what? Faith. God, in essence, God knows we wouldn't be effective enough. So he said, I need you in a position where you have no choice but to depend on me. He said, so you'll always make the situation bigger than you think it is so you can draw him what? In. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, so I might look poor according to the world's eyes. I might look poor according to the world's eyes. But I am rich in faith. But I am rich in faith. To be rich in life. To be rich in life. I want you to look and see now why does he want you in this state. Then we're going to look at the methodology that he used to accomplish it. Brother Charles, I want you to bring up... Um, and we're going to read it both from the King James, from the King James Version, Psalms chapter 4, verse 1, and then we will look at the Amplified too. Amen. It's good in the Amplified, but I like the simplicity of the King James. Amen. Psalms 4, 1. Psalms 4, 1. So on one hand, we have God said, the believer's position is to operate from a place, he calls it poor, where he can become rich. Mm -hmm. Did you finish that scripture? Yes, I did. Amen. And he said the reason so they can inherit the kingdom. Perfect. He said the, the believers have positioned to inherit the kingdom, but they have to use their faith. Right. Welcome, my brother. Amen. He said they have to use their faith. Tell somebody my poorish position, my poorish position is to release my very, my very rich, rich faith. faith. You have to understand how it works. Hallelujah. And you must notice this is why I start the message. Settle forgiveness, settle justification, and settle sanctification. If you don't settle this soon as you experience a little bit of impoverishness, you're gonna let the enemy interpret it for you. He won't tell you you have been set up now to release your faith. He'll go, it's because you didn't go to church. <laughs> because you didn't read the Bible. And then you start to beat yourself up and undo your justification. And you'll start to push away your sanctification so you can feel bad about yourself. Fearing, yeah. But in doing this, you're going to significantly stop the blessing of God from coming. Let's see what Psalms. Are we at Psalms, Brother Charles? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Psalms chapter 4, verse 1, King James said, Hear me when I call, Amen. O God of my righteousness, Thou hast enlarged me, say God of enlarged me, God is enlarged. But we need to see how. Amen? When I, when I was in distress. Amen? One of the version reads, you understand? In pressure. Have mercy. God said, it's in the pressure or the distress situation, I will what? Enlarge you. Mm -hmm. God can't enlarge you. You see, one of the things with God, He's very specific. God does not want to just enlarge you outside. If Jane and Charles decide, you understand, they just so love Kaya so much, they're going to give her a car right now. What is that called? Unrighteousness. Unjust. Wicked. They must increase her if they want to increase the blessing. Mm -hmm. If they want to give her a car and house and different things, Kaya has to be what? Grown up. Do you understand? When God wants to enlarge you, both materially, he must also enlarge you what? Spiritually. Yes, ability. Amen. The ability is, many people go, 
Well, I would love to have, but Sister Gloria, I would love to have a TDA. You better believe it comes with an increase in a being. Meaning, you have to discover more of Christ. You have to decrease more and discover more grace. More uh, Grace is what? Strength, power, and ability. You have to discover more. Amen. And what's typically just stopping it is you. Mm -hmm. There's too much of you in place still. Does this make sense? So the Bible said, God enlarges you through pressure, mm -hmm. through distress. So, the, so when God leads you into distress, he's trying to what? Enlarge you. So there are three specific things need to be enlarged in me. There's three specific things. Among the many. Among the many. But these three minimum have to be in play. These three minimum have to be in I want to look at I want to look at James back. Go to James chapter 1. We read this all the time. James chapter 1, verse 2 and 4. James chapter 1. Right? Where we were. Verse 2 and 4. I want to read the scripture carefully and take our time with it. Say amen when you're there. <coughs> Page 14. Mm -hmm. 43. Amplify. Mm -hmm. From the Amplify. I'm back into the Amplify. Only that one scripture I need from the King James. Okay. Please say amen when you're there. Keep in mind, remember, the foundation of you have been forgiven. Amen? Justify, qualify, and sanctify. Then keep in mind how God is going to enlarge you. No enlargement come without pressure. Yes. Amen? Our sister announced today, Sister Jazzy, she's pregnant. <laughs> if any one of you been following her, as her tummy enlarged, do you know what her life been in over the last 90 days? Has she been just having a joyful time? No. It's pressure for her body to what? Enlarge. Perfect. It's in the change. Do you, do you understand? She becomes what? Enlarge. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's, it, you know, excuse my description. It's like a woman about to give birth. Mm -hmm. Its pressure creates that space. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? <laughs> if, if there is no pressure, you will not enlarge. And this is why Satan trapped the world. The world wants instant gratification. Enlargement without any what? Pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the problem yeah. is you won't grow. Yeah. The situation, you'll have more, but you will still be what? Miniature. Yeah. You and more have to grow up. Take together. How are we here? The Bible said, let's read together. James chapter 1, verse 2 and 4. It said, consider it holy joyful, my brethren. Whenever you are enveloped in or in come to trials. Say trials. Trials. The Bible said, of any sort or fall into various temptation. So the things you're going to have challenging is trials going to envelope, envelope you yes. or temptation seems to have you. Mm -hmm. But let's see why. Verse 3 tells us why. It says, be assured, be certain, and I want, and the Bible says, and understand, you need to get it, mm -hmm. that the trial and you know, proving of your faith bring out of you. Yeah. Say something is coming out of me. Something something is is say trials, trials and temptation is designed to bring something out of me. Because God has already put something in me. And now he's trying to work it out of me. Do you understand this process? God has already put Jesus Christ's life what? In you. And he needs to create situation now, lead you into situation to work it what? Out of you. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. So the Bible said, when this trials or temptation, you must be certain and you must understand, mm -hmm. amen, it is designed to bring out endurance, steadfastness, and patience. Mm -hmm. Say, I need endurance out of me. I need, I need endurance, endurance out of me. I need patience out of me. I need patience And I need steadfast. And I need steadfast. I need you to understand why now. Listen to me. If you do not get Amen. steadfastness released out of you, you will start most things and you'll never finish it. You'll never see it to fruition. Christ tell a parable. He said, don't be like those who start something and never can what? Finish it. He said, people will laugh at you. So God needs to work out of you steadfast that when you start something, you stay with it. Amen. And during the hard time, as it's enlarging, you can endure. And the reason why you typically can't endure, your patience is deficient. Mm -hmm. 
So God said, in order to be steady and to endure the timeline, you need to perfect what? Patience. So God knew he cannot work with you because he used a germination system. We want instant gratification, but he used laws. He said, I need to perfect three things in you. He said, you must be steady. When you start something, don't swerve off of it. He said, you must learn to endure the time, the season, the period. Mm. And you must have patience that you do not what? Give it up. Mm. Believe me, most of us in your life, you should have accomplished certain things. Mm -hmm. But soon as you run into some hardship and some different season or period, you bail. Mm. Mm. Because your steadfast is still deficient. Your patience is inadequate. And your strength to endure is what? Not very good. Do you understand this, bro? Mm -hmm. God said, I'm going to put you in trials and allow you to get into temptation so I can perfect three things in you. Look at the next verse. No. The Bible said, but let endurance, your ability to endure, and steadfastness and patience have a full play. Let them fully mature. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And do a thorough work mm -hmm. so that you may be people perfect. Amen? Perfectly and fully developed. Amen? Not with no defects, lacking. God said, if this doesn't happen, you have what? Defects. Mm -hmm. The enemy know, and God know, at a certain point, you won't be able to endure. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, you will lose patience. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, you won't stay with it. Mm -hmm. So you got this thing, now I need, I need to just work. The Bible said, I need to do what? A thorough work. Amen. So that when you engage in a situation or to save a soul or a person, you are steady. You go, I can see this one through. I have enough grace to what? Endure it. Amen. I have enough patience to see it. Amen. Can you see it, church? Amen. Trials and temptation is for you. God is, God is not a sadist. He's not just torturing you. He's trying to perfect you. He's trying to grow you up. He's trying to get you in a state without defects, mm -hmm. deficiency. Mm -hmm. Who loves somebody and set them up? If you know anything about any sports, let's say I like martial arts or boxing. If, if I'm training Charles and I love Charles, you think before, and, and Pastor Charles is a master fighter, before he has perfected the style, and I'm pretty certain he can beat him or minimum match him, you think I'll let Charles fight him? No, because that will make me wicked. Especially if I know his skills, I know his skills. Mm -hmm. I must let, don't kill he wants to fight him. I will not allow him until all the defects have been what? Fixed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God let trials and temptation come to you to work out your defects, your inadequateness in patience, your inadequateness to endure, and your inadequateness to stay on the task. You, many of you, I don't know if you ever heard the story, the guy that was digging for gold, mm -hmm. true story. He digged for a long time and he wasn't finding nothing. So he packed up, he went to the frontier to find gold. He packed up and decided it's not worth it. And you know, somebody has buy his claim for next, for next to nothing. Within a week or two, you understand? Mm -hmm. or, or was oil, the man struck. He was two feet away from it when he stopped. Two feet. <laughs> when he decide, I, I'm not being steady with this. Thing. I've endured long enough. Oh. Two feet. Oh. God needs you to see certain things through. Amen. Why God can't use many of us and how we rob him of his glory. You are not perfected in steadfastness, in endurance and patience. There are too much defect in your character. It's why you lose your temper quite easy. Mm. It's why you can't stay on thing. Amen? It's why you're not discovering. It's why a lot of times you're getting discipline upon discipline of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is constantly showing you your patience is inadequate. Mm. Your endurance is not much of, a, much of an endurance. And your ability to be steadfast, it's a joke. So the Holy Spirit must lead you into trials and temptation to get you to what? Pull it out of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. This doesn't go away until it gets fixed. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. Mm 
Romans. This is Romans is the exact scripture of this, the sister of the same three things he's trying to. Brother Paul is talking has to be perfected. Romans 5, 1 to 5. Say amen when you're there. No, lack of faith is a Peter with us. Hmm. And, and the reason why it's because we are not perfected in endurance steadfast. We do not like this is where the mind of Christ is coming. And because we let the enemy lie to us. If you do not have the mind of Christ to endure suffering for a little while till your patience, your endurance and steadfastness, you will never, amen, become useful to the master. 2 Timothy 2, 20 to 22 will never work for you. Amen? The mind of Christ is to endure that process. Are we there yet, church? Amen. Romans chapter 5 from verse 1 said, Therefore, you'll notice we are justified. Therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, declare righteous, and give a right standing with God. See, I'm in right standing with God. I'm in right standing with God. Because I'm justified. Because I'm justified. Amen. The scripture went on to say, amen. And give you right standing with God. True faith. Mm. No, notice the rest of the scripture. The Bible said, therefore, let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation. We've been reconciled to God to hold and to enjoy peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God said, you are supposed to be experiencing peace with me. Because you have been reconciled, because you're justified. Amen? The Bible said, Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. Look at verse 2. Through Him also we have our access, entrance, introduction, by faith into the grace. Amen? The state of God's favor. Say, I live in a perpetual state. I live in a perpetual state. Of God's favor. God's favor. Say it again. I live in a perpetual state. I live in a perpetual state. Of God's favor. Of God's favor. So even when God leading you into trials, you understand? Or temptation is to bring you into his favor. It's to, it's to perfect in you that which is lacking. This is why you must not let the enemy interpret it. This is why you have to be enlightened on the matter. It isn't because you're not forgiven. It isn't because you're not justified. It is simply he's trying to perfect you. To grow you up. Amen? The scripture said, teaches us, you live in a state of God's favor, in which we formally and safely stand. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Let us exalt and triumph in our troubles. Then we are supposed to triumph in our troubles. We're supposed to triumph in our troubles. The Bible says, and rejoice in our suffering. Rejoice in our suffering. Say why? Why? The scripture tells us, knowing that pressure and affliction, uh, amen, and affection, affliction and hardship produce patient and amen and unswerving endurance. When God bring you into pressure, what is He trying to perfect? Patience and endurance. The scriptures say you must know if you are li listen. If you live in a perpetual state of God's favor. And he leads you into a situation. You think it's because you're not justified and forgiven? <clears throat> no. You are led into that situation to perfect patience. You know why the enemy tempts us easy? You have no patience. You can't wait to see it through. Mm. So he gives you instant what? Okay. What did he tell Eve? You can be like God what? Yeah. Now. Why wait? Why wait? So God brings about certain situations in your life to perfect in you endurance and patience and steadfastness. Ooh. And we let that devil interpret it for us. Oh, it's because great tree, you punch little Chantel. No, everything you did, you know, I was studying the, by, um, some work with Brother Nee. If you read the Old New Testament, you will notice almost nothing about it is about your past life. Yeah. Everything is about what? Since you're regenerated. God is not interested. Jesus already paid. This is why Jesus said, when I come back, I ain't dealing with sin. He said, what I'm going to deal with you is what you've been doing. You understand? Since I've been trying to perfect patience and endurance and steadfastness. He said, your path I have no interest in. But he's very interested in your present and your what? Your future. 
The pressure and the affliction and the hardship is to enlarge you. God needs to enlarge you that if He put a massive outer pressure on you, you can endure it. God needs to enlarge you within perfect steadfast that when He's taking you through, let's say you got to bring Israel, and Israel was so challenging, you never to what? Endure. Let me ask you a question. You think when you have a massive outer blessing, you think it comes with no pressure? You think, let's use, a, let's use a very physical example. You think it's easy to run apple? The amount of staff and the people and the competition? You know the level of endurance you have to have? The sleepless night thinking, how am I going to turn this around? The government? The amount of things you have to carry, the weight! When people, it's why, you know, every so often I get managers, I hire, etc. And you know why they quit and why they come? They go, and they say something, I see they have great skills. And they go, no, you should be a manager. They go, no, 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 no. I have the skills. But I don't like the pressure that comes with it. They go, I just want to come in and work and leave. I don't want to think about nothing else. A manager or owner can't come in and work and leave. The work is always what? With them. What state is the people in? What state do we have enough product? Do we have the right product? Are we, are we profitable enough? Is all the governmental requirement? Is the new competition? There's always so much pressure challenging you. You just can't come and work, come and, work and leave. So God said, I need to strengthen you to hardship. He said, I will strengthen you to difficulty and Hardship. So the pressure produces, amen, patient and unswerving, amen, endurance. The Bible says in verse 4, an endurance, amen, fortitude, the ability to endure, fortitude, develops maturity. How do you mature? Through learning to perfect the defects of endurance, steadfastness, and patience. Amen? It's an endurance develop maturity of character. Approve faith, try integrity and character of this sort produce the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. God know you are immature when you cannot endure. You do not yet have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ has the ability to enter hardship and pressure and persevere so the character can be solidified. So your steadfastness can come to completion. So your patience can come to completion. You know, Pastor Chow and me was laughing last week. There's a scripture in Jeremiah. The Bible said, if you run with men and you tussle with men and you get tired, God said, how am I going to be able to take you in the jungle to run against horses? Where God wants to take you in the spiritual realms to do spiritual battle, if people wears you out easy, and things and situation you can endure, I am sorry. You are useless for spiritual work. Yeah, because the demons are building that place. They're nastier, stronger, faster. So if people undo your patience quite easy, and things you can't endure, and you can't stay on things, I don't know by what means you're going to be able to do spiritual work. Because I'm going to show you one of the spiritual work you're supposed to do. And anybody who don't have patience, endurance, and steadfastness cannot do this work. Yeah. Don't let them fool you. Amen? They're like sun, sun showers. They come up for a minute, but they quickly dissipate. Perfect. Hallelujah? Perfect. The Bible says endurance, amen, matures us. The Bible says, verse 5, such hope never disappoint or deludes or shame us. For God love has been poured out in our heart through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So the key what I want you to catch, understand how God mature you. He leads you into trials, into temptation, into hardship, into pressure, and understand why to enlarge you. This nonsense Christianity, oh, everything's gonna be so nice and fun and it's all just that person is immature. Children experience that, and that's okay. But we don't call a child mature until they can take on what? Why do we, when we see a big man, 50, 60, 30, but he still cannot 
keep his home, cannot take care of his finance, take care of his family. What do we call it? You're a child. Just an age. He's just an age. The body has been around a long time, but their ability is what? They're children. They're immature. They have never passed through, endure any pressure. There's no patience perfected in them. No steadfastness. No endure. Only a fool put anything major in such a person's hands. Because you're giving it to them. And then worse if you get mad at them afterwards. Why are you getting mad? They have none of the characteristics of maturity. The characteristic of maturity is the ability to endure. Because any major situation comes with extreme what? Difficulties. You have to be able to endure those difficulties. It takes time to germinate or to mature. So you have to be able to endure. You need patience and steadfastness. So God work man or work woman is someone, he said, I have worked out the defects. And the reason he's leaving you into hardship and pressure, yes, he wants to enlarge you, but he has to fix the defects. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Yes. In the process of when you are being put through the pressure in order to um, produce endurance, patience, and steadfastness, that mm. you can come to full maturity in character and integrity. What if you start to psychologically you start to develop issue? What do you mean issue? Give me an idea. And like if let's say the, the whatever the pressure is, it's becoming too much. You've been going through it, let's say, for a long time. Yeah. And sometimes God's keep you there for a reason. It yeah. doesn't matter how long the duration is. But if to a certain point you said, psychologically you said you're tired and you're fed up, what is the defects there? there I'm about to come to that. The reason, in, in this hardship, God needs to switch out something in you. Mm -hmm. Now this endurance, I'm glad you asked the question, I'm coming there now. This endurance, steadfastness and patience is not you. You don't have it. It's what's in you. Notice what the scripture said in James 1-2. You need to bring it out of you. It's Christ. Something he put into you. If it's not coming out, it is because you are still operating. The one it's in is not being summoned. The Bible said in Romans 10, you must evoke Christ. God brings in hardship and pressure to crush you. But it can't crush Jesus is so you can discover Christ within. The Bible says in Colossians 1 26, the hope of glory which is Christ within man. God wants you to learn what's in you. He wants you to learn to release only Christ as the patient, not you and me. Only Christ can endure. But God needs you to discover him. It's in you. The situation is trying to pull it out of you. You know, I was reading something recently. Let me give you a scenario. And I read. Let's say you're a boatman. You carry people from one side of the shore to the next. Every day. That's your business. If you don't do it, you don't get paid. Now, when you're safe, at first, God let this happen. Every time you try to carry people, one, more people start coming. This is part of being safe. Christian likes this part, but it's still immature. They go, man, I used to have three people. Since I've been saved, I'm having 12. Not just that happening. Every time you're going to sail across the ocean, the wind is on your sail. Effortlessly you can cross. God let this happen for a while. For you to understand how much he loves you. This is strictly for you to understand he's with you and he loves you. But at a certain point, he needs to mature you. At a certain point, the people will become fewer. Worse than that, when you try to sail the Great Lake, there is no one. Win. And if you don't sail, you can't what? Eat. Now, imagine you say, well, I, you know, I've got, I'm going to starve. I have to sail. Even though there's no wind. So you're sailing and you have less people. Let me ask you a question. When is it you discover more of yourself? When you sail the water with no wind? Or when you sail the water with lots of wind and you don't have to do nothing? No wind. Of course, we don't grow in the nice, fun situation. We don't have to do much. We grow in the what? Difficulty. Like a rose. You understand? Oh, Sharon. You understand? In dark and deep and difficult place. In that scripture we like to read. That, that, that in, in um, uh, Psalms of Solomon. It, it's a barren place. It's a place where nothing grows. God wants you to be able to be effective. You understand? 
where nothing of you can't, the environment can't help you, but strictly the Christ that he put in you. So he leads you like a rose of Sharon into a difficult place where the customers are few and there is no wind so you can perfect. He creates the condition. James 2.5. It's called the believer's condition. On one hand, the Bible says the believer's condition is a place of impoverty. And then in Romans 5, you understand? Verse 3, he said the believer is in a perpetual state of God's favor. Can you see this, 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 this process? He goes, I have something in you that though there is no wind, you can cross what? The water. Mm -hmm. You learn more about God and you develop the most in difficulty and hardship. Mm -hmm. When there's no difficulty and hardship, you do not learn anything. Mm -hmm. You might enjoy yourself, but you do not discover what? No revelation of the Spirit. No discipline. In order to cross that water, when the people are so few and there's no wind, it takes the Holy Spirit to discipline you to cross, to depend on God, to know God can carry you through. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I want to show you something. There's a work God wants you to do. And if He don't lead you to do this, you're not going to do the work. Go to Job chapter 16. Job If anybody knew about this work, Job did. <laughs> Job 16. Job 16, 21. Say amen when we did. Understand the story of Job. Um, I can't read that much. If you get time, I want you to read from Job 9 to 22. We can't do that today. I don't have that much time. But I want you to read to understand the story. But I'm going to pick it up from 16 to 21. 16 to 21. Job chapter 16, uh, page 584. Amplified. Now we're going to go to Charles from 16 to 21. Job, Job 16. Job 16. 16 to 21. Huh? Yeah. So 16, 16 to 21. Yeah, thank you. Brianna? How are we there? Amen. You are like a rose of Sharon. Amen. But God wants you to execute at a high level, without defects, in hard and difficult situations, circumstances. In essence, he don't want the environment to impact you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. He don't want the environment able to sway you. This was his fight with his disciples. He had a little faith. Soon as some wind and the environment get hard, they start thinking they're going to die. So God leads you into a situation to perfect the defects. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Go ahead. Please. I have a question. Mm -hmm. If I'm at a place to know that I'm already doomed mm -hmm. from all of this, from all the sufferings, not from maturity. Yes. Not, yeah, not from maturity. Yeah. You are redeemed from sin. Yeah. You're suffering. Yes, from sin suffering. Yeah. Not from pressure maturity. development. Okay. Yes. Because okay. it makes the spirit within us is not a development. Correct. Okay. You're redeemed from false yeah. suffering. Yes. The perfect. Because Satan tries to change what your maturity development is. It's because you're sinning. No, you're forgiven. So, yes, I'm redeemed from all that. But there's no way that he that is within me, that great is getting all those issues out there to cling to him and yeah. to turn to him. So you can overcome. Perfect. To know that even though that block was put there to be the stumble, that I still rejoice only in him. Yes, knowing that he will bring you through. It's for you to know what's in you. God will not let you be a fake. A fake is one who said they're an overcomer, but they don't know even the one who overcome in there. Mm -hmm. Satan, no, you don't know. You can't fool him. He will tear you apart. The kingdom will get no glory. You can't help nobody. It's like Nikki said. Now all of this, I want to show you, all of this, I want to show you what God is after, what he wants to do with you, why he's trying to mature you. Mm -hmm. How are we doing? We got to go. I only got about 10 more minutes. 
The Bible read, so Satan, from verse 9 to 15, which I've not read it, Satan just handled Job. Mm. He just handled him hard. So verse 16, Job said, My face is red and swollen with weeping. Mm. And on my, on my eyelid, eyelid is the shadow of death. My eyes are dim. Amen? <laughs> he said, Although there is no guilt, amen, or violence in my hands, and my prayer is pure. Job know you are forgiven. Can you go through this knowing like Job? It ain't because you're not unforgiven. Mm -hmm. It ain't because you're not justified. Right. Job knew this. Mm -hmm. Even my heart and my prayer is pure. I know I'm not suffering because I'm sinning. No, why? Because Jesus is forgiven. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not suffering because I'm not justified. Because Jesus has qualified me. I'm in a perpetual state of what? God's favor. Hallelujah. Yes. What, at best I might need is some sanctification to move away from the crazies. Mm -hmm. So Job knew this. Uh, uh, as Jackie just said. Verse 18 said, O heart, cover my blood. Amen. O heart, cover not my blood. And let my cry have no resting place. Where it will cease. Amen. Cease being heard. He said, I don't want the word to cover me up that my case is not constantly being heard. Verse 19 said, Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and he who vouch for me is on high. He's talking about God. My friends scorn me, but my eyes pour out tears to God. Look at verse 21. This is the work you have to do. Oh, that there were one who might plead for a man with God. He said, Is there anybody who could intercede for a man with God? Amen. And that he might maintain, say it's not enough to plead. Not not enough enough to plead. I must maintain it. Must maintain Jesus it. said you must ask and keep on. Asking. Job understands you. Job God, if there was somebody to plead my case with God and to what? Maintain the plea. Mm. Can you endure the prayer night? Wow. Can you endure the prayer season? You know, we were going to change prayer night to once a month, and the church go, can we just pray in the vision? I love it. If, if there's somebody, to maintain. Oh, amen. The to say it. If there's somebody to maintain the cry, the case of the poor, the mm. case of the afflicted, mm. the case of the broken, mm. if there's somebody. Mm -hmm. Do you know why God wants to perfect your endurance? <laughs> so you so you will plead and maintain the case, the cry of the widow and the fatherless and the broken. And those that have been tear apart. And have, he said, if there any righteous one that must live by faith, that will plead and maintain. You see, sometimes you meet a Christian and they can plead for you one, once. But because they're not perfected in endurance, they can't what? Maintain. Because they're not perfected in steadfastness, they can't what? Maintain. Though they are righteous, they're justified. They're distracted. Job said, Oh, that there was one who may plead for a man with God and that he maintained, amen, his right with him as a son of man plead with or for his neighbor. This is why Jesus is always before God. What did he do? Maintaining the plea. <laughs> God wants to develop you. That when he brings you into a situation, not just you'll pray about it, you'll what? It's like a five-second prayer. Yes. Oh God, can you help Sister Gloria? And then it's gone from you. You can't maintain the case of Sister Gloria. Until she get the change, you don't come off of it. Yeah, that's right. But that can't happen if you have not been matured. You have no ability to endure any prayer, any resistance. You don't have the patience to see it through. You can't stay on the task. Your steadfastness has defects. You think God tolerates them? No, 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 no. He said, those I love, I'm going to perfect. I'm going to discipline. He said, I'm going to lead you into hardship and pressure. Till endurance produce maturity. Now when I place a case in your hand, you know, I told you a girl came to me last week. And I told her I'm going to pray for her. Did you think I just stopped there? Did you know what I told her to? 
I want you to keep me posted. What's going on? Why do I need to be posted? Give God glory. Must I? Do I have to maintain the plea of the case? Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the Almighty. Pray and wash. I don't just pray and walk away. In fact, since I prayed, the Lord told me it was done. But I told her, I want you to tell me what's going on. I must maintain the plea. So I saw her yesterday. I was like, this is great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God brings her in contact with one that knows he's been forgiven. Mm -hmm. He brings her in contact with one who knows he's been justified. He brings her in contact with one who we allow God to consecrate him. He brings her in contact with one who has been steadfast, endure, and patient. That they'll pick up the case. You see, we are the kingdom service. And when God wants to help somebody, he go, I have a lawyer, but I don't have money. He go, oh, don't worry. He won't need money. You understand? He deals Pro with bono. the... the, the Pro bono. <laughs> Hallelujah. He got, he lived um, before me. He has been paid and paid in full. So I just want you to go to him because he lived to the unright, you understand? To deal with the unrighteous and the, in, the injustice of the world. So when you want to tell him your case or tell her your case, they'll go, I got it. Mm -hmm. I know I can take it to the Supreme Court. Amen. I can take it to the true high court. Yes. And not just that. He has matured me to maintain mm -hmm. the plea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Woo. Amen. Woo, Jesus. I have a question. Yes. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, the scriptures are flowing. I get what you're saying. Mm. But when you go before God, mm. And you lay your plea. Mm -hmm. You leave it there. You walk back and you're rejoicing now that mm -hmm. it's been done. Mm -hmm. Not constantly asking it over and over. If you don't see the manifestation. But you're thanking him all along. Yes. This yes. has been done. All yes. the time. Yes. Him, I'm asking him, heal this hand, heal this hand. You got to go in faith, know that it is done. Yes. In faith to be released. But sometimes, as you'll see, I'll show you. Sometimes God will make you bring a trouble one time, two times, seven times, like Elijah. Elijah prayed, and he sent his servant, he said, go and tell me what you see. He come back and he got nothing. Elijah knew that one prayed again. He said, go and tell me seven times until it manifests. Mm -hmm. You don't stop until it manifests. Got it. Yeah. But, but, but if I know I'm not a wishy-washy, mm -hmm. and I go before God, and I call upon the servant, yeah. and I said, Lord, here I am. Yeah. I'm clean because this is what he wants me to mm -hmm. do. I'm walking with each other. This has been done. Yes. You got to call it forth. Yes, but it. if you didn't see it, like Elijah or Christ prayed three times. Yes. Minimum, my point is, until it's manifested. The Bible says, mm -hmm. watch and pray. Now this guy, this is, this is lack of diligence. Now I pray, I say it's done. No, 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 no. Job said you must maintain it until it manifests. So you saying I need to remind God that I've come before you before and this day telling you this? They, uh, in fact, the scripture said exactly or that. I should say, Father, as I lay this before you, you've already answered this plea. And the Bible said, call it into remembrance you. again, if necessary. Oh, yes. No, no, no. Part of God's development and relationship. Sometimes God can always answer it right away, but sometimes he don't. So he's so, making that power to call it as it is. Yeah. Call it, um, you're, speaking, like, like, you're speaking of Romans 4.70. Yeah. Romans 4.70 said, call for those things that be not as though they are. That's releasing your faith. Yeah, and I know that it's been answered. But I walk up, But I think my reminders, which I do all the time, mm -hmm. is to grant that individual a, a, a heart and a mind to know that this has already been done and to receive it. Yes. Because oftentimes that person is closed. They don't know Christ enough yeah, in to part, receive. Well, some of it is you too. Something God has perfected your patience and endurance. Got it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus needs to ask and, and, and went to and, and went to to thanks. You all, once you ask, you should immediately. I, I think you. Let me let me clear something. Once you ask, you should immediately turn to thanksgiving. In fact, your asking should be in a form yeah. of thanksgiving. But you must also remind God if what you pray for or thank did not manifest, then you must also remind God again. Jeremiah. Um, Isaiah said this, he goes, I will not rest till I see the peace and the deliverance, you understand? I'll give no rest to my eyes of, 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 um, of Zion. He already had prayed. So this one part is praying, one part is releasing your faith and thanksgiving. But there's the other part of seeing it done. And if it's not being done, and God has a reason. This, this was all of Job's argument. Tell me why. 
Because he knew his prayer was pure. He knew his heart was pure. But God doesn't manifest it. Right. Mm. It's, it's, like, it's like me praying for members of this church. Mm -hmm. But I got to turn to God and say, now, this is what I did. Reveal unto me the reason why. If, if okay? necessary. Because I realize what I'm asking for. I can't pray in vain. Correct. But reveal unto me the reason or what needs to be done. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. You got to know when to ask. And but any time you're not seeing the manifest, you, you should be asking. Yeah. Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, um, Elisha, as you know, I told the widow that she's going to have a child and she have a child. And you know, the child died. When Elisha looked into the heavens, he couldn't see. Mm. He prayed, he couldn't see. He got, I don't, he said, he said, I am praying, but I cannot see. God is blocking me from seeing what he's doing. Mm. So he maintained the process. First he prayed for the child, the child wouldn't. You understand? Eli and the child. You do what it takes until it manifests. Knowing, fully believing God can. Amen? And God will until it manifests. Mm -hmm. What you don't do, this is a poor workman. I do it because I tell it to God I can leave. You're sure God done with you or the situation? Mm -hmm. Until that situation manifests, you don't believe it. Sometimes God wants to train you in mm -hmm. perseverance. Sometimes he wants to do something more with the situation. You who the case has been come to have to see the case through. Mm. I, I get all, I, I understand what you're saying. It's like, it, I understand that. I guess I'm a different spot. So you're talking about thanksgiving. You pray to God pray and to God. give thanks. Yeah. But you, that does not neglect you. have to see it through. I, I, you know, I, but, but my point is, I'm not going back to him. I'm asking him now to grant our heart. Yeah, or him or her. Grant her heart to receive. But not necessarily it's her. The, the response on Sometimes it's you. But if I'm... If You're yeah, assuming the I'm reason... A, I'm, I'm constantly surrendering me. Use me as your vessel. Mm -hmm. You get to that place. I'm empty. I empty me. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. I'm trying not to come. I'm not saying but, but after I've done that, I walk with somebody, tell them, look at me wrong. Or like the devil reminds you. Oh, you know what? She, she, she threw a word at me. And it takes you there to link there and, 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 and takes you out of the light into a little bit of darkness. That's what he does. He really takes you there. He could. Yeah. yeah. Right? But but I'm talking about if I pray, and I I do that because it comes to mind. I'm you know like instantly like probably, probably it comes to you like something I think about this person, pray for this person, you know what I mean. Um, I leave it there because I thank God because that came to my in being to pray for this person also and I thank him right away. I don't remember going back the next day or until that, the Spirit reminds me again and again. All prayer should be done by the Spirit but until the Spirit, in spiritual work there's something called a burden. Meaning the Spirit wells up something in your spirit. Until that burden is dissolved you don't stop. This is part of being a lazy workman. I, 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 I can um, pray for Pastor Chow. The burden did not dissolve and I walk away. Because I give it to God I, and I'm thanking God that he did it. But there's something, for whatsoever the reason, there are many reasons, mm -hmm. yes, until that burden is dissolved, it don't go away. Jesus prayed for, um, I can't remember, I think it was, a, how many lepers were there? Uh, 11. Oh, 11 or 12 lepers. Uh, yeah. But only one came and showed himself. Jesus said, did I heal 11 or 10 of them? Where's the rest? And he tell them what? Go and show yourself. Mm -hmm. It has to be, not just, when you are talking to start in prayer. There's another part of prayer. It's called the conclusion. What you pray for must conclude. Just like Elijah. Just like Elisha, the same thing. Just like Christ. There are some prayers, yes, as soon as you pray, you sense the burden dissolve and you walk away. It's done. But there's some prayers when you pray and it's not always the person. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's you. Yeah, I, I understand also also that you know I pray for a pain or something going, but that pain comes back and stay there. Sometimes. You know what I mean? Or or that or that sickness. But that doesn't take me up from my faith that no God didn't answer in the air. Correct. Or you know? Yes. I mean that might be a reminder to tell me that you gotta constantly or rebuke that or, or speak, you know what I mean? Yeah. Call it to go or whatever. I get what you're saying, but I gotta I wanna try to understand. Do you go to daily? If necessary. 
if necessary. If, if the Spirit doesn't revive, tells me though. Then you shouldn't pray because that prayer then comes from the soul. Mm -hmm. If the Spirit, the Bible says, man, to pray without season. If the Spirit keeps saying, return, deal with this matter. Yes. In fact, it when you go to pray, like when, you, when you submit Amen. yourself as a vessel to pray, like this white towel, the Holy Spirit should lay a sheet before you. Mm -hmm. Until this sheet, that sheet is what's called in spirituality the burden. The Bible calls it the same thing. Until this sheet moves away, you don't stop. Yes. Got it? So if every time you kneel down, the Holy Spirit bring back me yes. to you and separate, yes. you like keep that, that up. Yes. Because yes. when it's gone, this will go away. Uh. What's called inadequateness, I pray the sheet is there and I just go about my business. That person is still a child. That person is not mature. They yeah, don't the understand spirit spiritual things. The spirit is working. Correct. Not me, right? I mean, you're in your days working. You may stand in a machine and this person come to you. And you get a glimpse of what's going on. You instantly, you get the spirit in your prayer. But that's the spirit offering. Always. You know, but if that spirit keeps bringing that person or thing again, like that, and yeah. you maintain that prayer. But it's not me in my own self. Constantly. No, no. But in truth, for a Christian, they shouldn't even be there. They should pick up the cross. They should not be. They should be always led by the Spirit. Mm. Because if not, none of that prayer they're doing is any good, any of it's all useless. That's where I was going with it. Amen. Mm. Then, okay, that's the cross. The cross should move self out of the way. That as the Spirit lead you, you pray. Mm. Amen. Mm. But as Job said, if there is one to pick up my case mm -hmm. and to maintain it before God. Mm -hmm. Because Job's suffering was long, long gated. So he needed somebody to maintain it till he what? Got better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what Elisha did. Elisha, he sent his staff. He said, just, 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 just put it on the boy or tell him that this should be happening. So when it's not happening, he must what? Maintain. So if he's still not seeing it happen, he go, okay, I'll look to, okay, I'm not even going to look at the boy. I'm going to look to God. How come it's not happening? But then he got God is closing thing. He's not letting me see. Because you know God is capable. You know it should be done, but it's not being done. Then you maintain. In my own life, after I pray for the girl, you know, I wanted to see if the Lord move on her. Because if the Lord doesn't move, I will maintain what? The prayer. But I could see the Lord already move. But right, instantly when I pray, I also enter thanksgiving. But I also, like a doctor, I follow her. You don't just walk away like a poor workman. You work and work thorough. Thorough. Amen? Let's continue. Amen. So, Job said, if there is one, the Lord, part of you being forgiven mm -hmm. and justified and sanctified, is so you can pick up the plea of those that can't. On your side, you will suffer from maturity, meaning God will lead you into hardship to enlarge you. But many others suffer simply because they're not even regenerated and you are to pick up their case. Amen? Now, if when the Lord is leading you into, you understand, hardship and pressure to enlarge you, you are thinking it is because you're not forgiven and you're not justified, you are corrupting the pure work of the Holy Spirit. You're defiling it with your unbelief, bringing up things that, have, that should be settled. You are in a training, assimilation process, and you are bringing in unforgiveness, matters that have been settled. You are bringing in justification. Lord, it's because I didn't pray. Lord, it's because I didn't come to church. What does those have to do with you being transformed into maturity? Those should be settled. So the Holy Ghost work, revelation, and discipline can be what? Unhindered and undefiled. Remember, the Holy Spirit has to reveal to you the things of God. Jesus said, you'll take from me and give what? To you. And he must discipline you to lay hold of it and to maintain it. God said you must keep it, watch it, and, you know, and guard it. So, Hallelujah. I have one last question. Because mm. I know this is, uh, I can only speak for me mm. and on my journey. And this is the pertaining to you. So this, the, 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 the enemy always reminds you of your past. He loves them. Um, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm all, all righteous, because none of us say you can only be righteous through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right. What I find in actuality is, and this is how, I, this is how it's clear, and I want to know if it's the Holy Spirit that reminds you or takes you there, 
um, it may come to your thoughts, you know what? And I get what you're saying, like, in, the, in 21, I must have offended someone. Um, and it comes to me. And, and maybe these are the part, these are the, 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 the stumbling blocks. But how do we approach it? And this is me in actuality. Um, who knows how to, who would call upon the father, for the father? Thank you for the heart of forgiveness, but grant them also, because maybe it's that other person who's who's holding me there, who's not releasing me. They can't hold it. Or 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 grant them a heart also to to, to forgive. Because if they can control you, you will have no sovereignty, and the only but because they it's, don't it's, have but you. because it's entering me. Yeah. Right? So then you are holding you here. Yeah. So I can, I. I but I'm already, I'm already understand that Christ has already forgiven my past, my future, mm -hmm. even those, my past. Then what they do should have zero So I ask for you. that forgiveness. Yeah. Thank you for the forgiveness. I'm already forgiven. I don't have to ask. I'm already yeah. forgiven. <coughs> I already accept that my Lord and Savior look that I'm redeemed. But it's also the grant that person who couldn't come to my thoughts a heart of forgiveness. Okay. It allows you praying for them as, they, as an entity of their own. And you can pray for you as your own. You can't link the two though because you are... I thank you for my forgiveness. Yes. Because grant that individual came to my thoughts. Correct. A heart. Yes. Yes. Love, but <laughs> yes. love they are not... Because they can't control And I move on. Correct. The reason why because it came to me. Yeah. Right? As we should. If that's what That has come to me. Yeah, Amen. But I can only speak for me. Correct. And I've moved on. Yeah. Correct. Correct. If you bring someone, you we must settle our forgiveness. When we accept Christ, we are forgiven, forgiven. for I past, that. present, and, I thank and my future. Lord for that. But somebody's struggling there. Then yes, okay? you pray. And that's a case. Pray for the all. That's a case that comes to you. Right? That's a case. But, yes. but should I? Oh, my point is, should I only say, "Oh, my sins are already forgiven"? I'm not worried about that. No, if God brings you the case and the Holy Spirit wants <coughs> you to pray, you pray for them. What you just can't say though, well, because of what they're doing is in their name. No, no. Then they that's want to know the work. Why that 